Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, we have a work and energy conservation type of problem. But what's special about this problem is that the force by which the block on the surface here is being pulled is working at an angle, is pulling at an angle with 30 degrees relative to the horizontal, which means that it has a horizontal and a vertical component. The mass of the block is 10 kilograms. It has a weight pulling down towards the earth and a normal force pushing back. But in this case, the normal force is not going to be equal to mg because there's a component of the force pulling upward on the block. So it's the sum of these two forces which are going to equal mg, and we'll see that in just a moment. There's also a, f a force of friction pulling in this direction because the block is being pulled over a rough surface where the coefficient of friction is 0 0.20, a distance of 5 meters, and the block starting at rest with a velocity initial at zero, we're asked to find the final velocity after the block has traveled five meters. Finding the force due to friction, force due to friction, that's going to be equal to the normal force times mu. And so what is the normal force? Well, let's see here the sum of all the forces. The sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero which means that the normal force acting upward plus the force in the y direction minus the weight mg, that all adds up to zero, which means that the normal force is equal to mg minus the force in the y direction. Of course, the force in the y direction is f times the sine of 30. Plugging that in here, we can say that the friction force is therefore equal to mg minus the force in the y direction multiply times mu. And now we're ready to set up the equation to try and calculate the final velocity. What we're going to do here is use the energy conservation equation that says that the initial energy must equal the final energy, which means any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy must equal the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy, plus any heat lost by overcoming the friction. So let's see which of those components we have. Is there any work put into the system? And the answer is yes, there is, because there's a force component in the x direction that pulls the block in the same direction as the displacement. So what we can say here is that the work done is equal to the force component in the x direction multiplied times the displacement. And notice that is a dot product. There's no initial potential energy because the block is on the ground and there's no initial kinetic energy because the block starts at rest. So the work put into the system by the force in the x direction, the component in the x direction, must equal, well, is there any final potential energy? Again, the block does not gain any height, so there's no final potential energy, but it does have final kinetic energy because the kinetic energy must be one half m times v final squared plus the heat lost by overcoming friction which is the friction force dotted with the displacement. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for v final. So we get one half m v final squared is equal to the work put into the system by the x component of the force which is f x times d, and that's of course a dot product, minus the heat loss now, because what we're doing here is it was plus the heat loss, that goes over the other side, it now becomes minus the heat loss. Remember that heat loss on the right side is a positive quantity, we have to add the heat loss. Even though heat loss is negative, we have to add the heat loss. And when we move that to the other side, it becomes minus the heat loss. So minus the friction force multiplied times the displacement. So whatever this number is, we're going to have to subtract that from this, because that's the energy taken out of the system by the friction force. Multiplying both sides by 2 and dividing both sides by m, we get v final is therefore equal to the square root of 2 over m times the force f times the cosine of, of 30 degrees, that's f times the cosine of 30 degrees, times the distance, d, multiplied times the cosine of zero degrees, because it's in the same direction, minus 
the heat loss due to friction, which is mg minus the force in the y direction times mu, that's the friction force, times d. And I need the closing brackets. Now we're ready to plug in the numbers and see what we get. V final is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 10, the mass is 10, times 120 times the cosine of 30 degrees times 5. So that's the work put into the system, minus mg, which is 10 times 9.8, minus the force in the y direction, force in the y direction is 60 newtons, half of 120, minus 60, multiply times 0 0.2, and multiply times the distance of 5. And all that is underneath the radical. And simplifying that, we get the following. V final is equal to the square root of 1 tenth times 600 times the cosine of 30 degrees minus this is 98 minus 60, that's 38 times 1, so minus 38. There we go. Equals. Now, oh, we need to close the brackets. Now we're ready to calculate this. So 600 times the cosine of 30 minus 38 divided by 10. Take the square root and we get V final is equal to 6.94 meters per second. All right, so let's review what we just did. Notice we have a block being pulled across a rough surface with coefficient of friction. The force is pulling at an angle, so this is doing the work on the block. This is taking some of the weight off the block so that the normal force is actually mg minus the vertical component and therefore the friction force needs to take that into account. The energy equation tells us that the work put into the system by the horizontal component of the force must equal the energy gained in terms of kinetic energy plus the heat lost. Energy gained is one half mv squared. Heat loss is friction force times distance and the work put in is the f, the x component of the force times the distance. So therefore v final is two over m times the force times the distance, which is the work put into the system, F in the X direction, so that's F times the cosine of 30 times the displacement, minus the friction force times the coefficient of friction times the displacement. And when you crank out the numbers, you get 6.94 meters per second. And that's how it's done.